So let's do High Rise, which I think is the you know the highest profile release of the week. Um, an adaptation of J.G. Ballard's novel from the mid seventies. Uh, people have been trying to get this to the screen for decades. Back in the late nineteen seventies, Nick Rogue was attached to uh, to a, uh, a project which was going to do it. Didn't happen. Since then, I think Vincenzo Natale's been uh, been attached at some point. Richard Stanley was talking about it. Loads of people. And now finally comes to the screen. Directed by Ben Wheatley. Uh, ben Wheatley, who made Sightseers, uh, Kill List. Um, do you, have you, did you do you see Kill List? I went back and listened to our review of it again, and it ended up with me saying you really have to see this because it's very very disturbing. Yeah, no. Okay, fine. Um, so uh, Ben Wheatley, of whom I'm a big fan, and the script is by Amy Jump, with whom he is. Uh, worked with uh, all, all his projects. Story is basically a, a tale of the future set in the 1970s. So the book was written in the 70s, looking into the near future. The really smart thing about what uh, Wheatley and Jump have done is to set their version of this story in a kind of 70s world, like a parallel 70s world. So it's like, it's a vision of the past seen from the present looking at the future. It stars Tom Hiddleston as Dr. Lang, who moves in at the beginning into this uh, high-rise building, this luxury apartment building which very quickly becomes a microcosm of a collapsing society. At the beginning, we hear him, actually with the very, very beginning, we see him uh, three months after moving in. It starts with a sort of feral depiction of life, in, with, with, with the voiceover saying he's content with this. And then we come back to three months earlier to see how we got to this point. And he moves in because he wants to make an investment in the future. We know that he's self-contained. We know that he's somebody who, in a way, treasures his anonymity. He's also somebody who is slippery, somebody who we can't quite define. Because one of the things about the high rise is that it has very clearly defined social boundaries. Here's a clip. Yes, I'm afraid I'm not very good at this sort of thing. The starting in me. Yes, uh, I was rather expecting to find a certain kind of anonymity. Don't worry, people don't usually care what happens two floors above or below them. Good. Charlotte's different, she's on all sorts of committees. She said your tenancy application was very Byronic. Is she really? <laughs> well, I'm determined to get everything right. Right. Top up? Yes, thank you. Which floor are you? Uh, 25, one floor down. Tennis? Uh, no, squat, actually. It's 20, I think. Why here, not to bachelor the pad in town? An investment in the future, I suppose. I felt like I needed a clean slate to put my mark on. We're down in the bottom in all sorts of shadows. Most families are, real ones anyway. So the real families are down in the bottom. Up at the very top on the penthouse is uh, Jeremy Irons, the architect, Anthony Royal, the person who, as he said, is the architect of his own accident, somebody who put all his energies into creating this building, which he perceived as a crucible for change and believes will be a paradigm for future development. Of course, what happens is as soon as Dr. Lang moves in, the cracks start to appear, the lifts start to fail, the lighting starts to judder. Things start to fall apart. And the central reason for this is that the building appears to be imposing some sort of chaos on its tenants. And what you get is a kind of dramatised uh, arch version of class war, although it's middle class versus lower middle class versus upper middle class versus super rich. Where are the working class then? Well, it's not... It, 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 because bear in mind it's a sort of luxury apartment, okay. so actually that's which, which is which is weird. Funny enough, I, I I interviewed Ben Wheatley about this. He said it's funny. Yeah, when you read the, when when you remember the book, you think that that's what it is, but in fact, it is actually of a very sort of cl a, a, a sort of, a, of an upper register strata. So. I like this movie very much. I've seen it a couple of times now, and I, as I said, I did a long interview with Ben Wheatley, of whom I'm a fan. Here are the reasons I like it. Firstly, I think Tom Hiddleston's central performance as Lang is terrific. He has that thing about being, as I said, slippery, being charismatic, being somebody who you can't quite read. He has a sinister edge to him, although he's also very charming, very attractive, apparently very smooth. I love the design of it, Mark Tilsley's design, the way in which they've sort of recreated this world, which is, a, like I said, a future retro 70s. It owes something to the Starliner Tower of uh, Shivers, the David Cronenberg film from the mid-70s. It also has that very Ballardian sense of a kind of alienated world, a world of sort of brutalist concrete structures in which 
everything is becoming dehumanized. I think that um, the, the way the camera movements go from being, so Laurie Rose as the camera, the way they go from being sort of almost Kubrickian ele elegance at the beginning to something more shaky, more handheld as the film starts to depict the collapse of the society inside the high rise is really well done. I think Clint Mansell's score is eerie and woozy and unsettling and at the same time as being sort of sensuous. I also think the film has a very strong sense of black comedy running all the way through it. I mean, it's, it becomes extremely dyspeptic, but it has this kind of this black comic sensibility, which is something which has always underwritten uh, Ben Wheatley's uh, work. I think Amy Jump has done a terrific job with the screenplay, uh, incidentally. Now, the, 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 the... You'll say hello to Clint Mansell, by the way. Oh, yes. He's okay. a regular listener. Well, I'm a big fan, hello, Clint. As, 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 I'm, as I'm sure he knows. Um, it, when the film first played at Toronto, um, it really divided critics. Uh, people either really liked it or really didn't like it. Um, actually, I think the, the tide of opinion is now largely in its favour, but it has proved very divisive, and I like that about it. I like the fact that it's a film which has provoked quite sort of... Um, uh, you know, antagonistic responses from some people and, and real praise. From I am firmly in the pro camp. I think it is uh, a, an adaptation. I mean, it, the other weird thing about it is, in terms of its sort of references, there's a lot of Zartos in it. And uh, as I said when I first Which is saw not a it, good thing. well, funnily enough, it's. Uh, it's a film that has, and Ben Wheatley's passion for Zardoz and the way in which the Zardoz references are used in the film, he says they're not put there intentionally, but I think they're quite clearly there, has almost made me want to go back and rethink Zardoz. Oh, so it's a it. thumbs up from me. Now, you, now, you're, now you are just going ridiculous. <laughs> okay.